Oh, it's like that. <laughs> Start a bar, I guess, off by clearing my throat and a cough. Um, September 20th, 2023. It's like 8.30, 9 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. I'm about 20 minutes away from Bryce Canyon. I hiked all day. I got up really early. I hiked all day in Zion National Park. I did the Narrows, which is basically a river walk, and then it's paved, and then it ends. And you walk in the river, and there's a current coming down, and you can go to the side, and there's some sandbars, and then it ends, and you have to cross over, and it ends, and you have to cross over. So it was five and a half hours, six hours, um, because you have skill levels, all sorts of skill levels. You have hikers, and then you have borderline hikers slash tourists. They're taking photos, so everybody's stopping. And sometimes the water gets pretty deep. It wasn't super deep today, but it was up to my waist. I had to take my shirt and my gear off and hold it above my head. And some of the smaller women were, you know, almost, you know, up to about here on them. All in all, super fun. It's basically the top glacier melting and water that comes on the top and it runs down the river from the top of the into the canyon that's been carving the canyon out. I don't know exactly what I'm going to make about this video, but one thing that I was, the park was just so amazing. If anybody can go there, I recommend doing it. I think it's going to be something that I do again next year. Um, and maybe bring some friends with me. It was so beautiful. It's like a Garden of Eden because it's it's protected and it's down in a canyon. So the whole canyon's protected. So you're running into uh, horned sh sheep. You're running into squirrels that come right up to you, wild turkeys, um, mule deer. I didn't see any gray foxes, but they're there. I did see some eagles. I didn't see any condors, but they're there. Um, it was just a really beautiful, really amazing. They have a lodge that has a big, beautiful tree that's multiple multi curves. Maybe I'll put some photos at the end here. And then the grass. So I was sitting in the grass, just looking up at this with the red rock that's um, red from the iron in the background. Maybe I want to lean back. Let me see if I can pull this closer. And I can lean back. Perfect. So I'm in like a... The, there was no rooms anywhere. So I'm in like a... A quality inn. Well, it should be a low, low quality inn. But I'm, I'm happy there was a room. Because um, there was no campsites either. I would have I would have just set up my car. And camped all day. But like I said, I got up super early. I walked to the park and then you take shuttle to the top. Then I did six hours of hiking, three hours back, three hours out, three hours back. Then I went down and then I walked to the hike to the lodge. Yesterday, I don't think I filmed the video, but I did the Emerald Pools, which were amazing. And I met so many people. I don't know if it's the beard. Actually, I got to bring this up. Dudes, guys. Be in decent shape. I'm 48. I'm not in the best shape. And But the amount of women that complimented my beard, that started conversations with me, granted people are on vacation and stuff. And I had Asian people stop me. <laughs> this is crazy. I had Asian people stop me from China and probably Japan or wherever, but... Uh, like the Orient, Eastern Asian, to take a picture of me with the beard. They couldn't get enough of the beard. It was, uh, I thought it was funny and fun, so I just did it. Um, but be in decent shape. Don't take, you know, don't be, a, get in the shape you can take your shirt off. I had my shirt off when I was hiking, so I didn't get wet and stuff in my bed. Women would compliment the beard. It's an in for me. I get into a little talk. The problem is I'm on vacation. So it's like I got one night. So I did I did give out my email. My, my friend was like, start giving out your email more. So I, was, I gave my email out a couple of times. We'll see where that goes. What was great 
is especially the women that were from other countries, zero tattoos, very friendly. Um, but anyways, you have these emerald pools. I kept running into the same people, saying hi, checking the stuff. I met a couple from um, Connecticut. I met somebody else from Washington. I ran into a photographer, and she was talking to me a little bit uh, from Oklahoma. So, and I kept running the same people, and we'd exchange information. But Zion National Park was super fun, super beautiful. I can't even explain what it was, but one thing that really struck me, too, is so it's this canyon that's taken millions of years to develop. And there's this very slow river that you walk through that's not big. It's not the Mississippi River. It's not anything. Some parts of it are barely up to your calf. And again, I'll put some photos at the end here. I didn't take many photos today. I left the Narrows hike for me. For me. So I didn't put anything on Instagram. I didn't put anything, take any photos. I just bagged my camera up for the day. Every now and again, I take my hat off and just look and just soak it all in and then put my hat back on and go. But this tiny, tiny little river, just slowly carving this giant, beautiful canyon that everybody goes to. And it creates these mudslides. And sometimes there's a flash flood after it rains. And that tears up trees and creates these bigger mudslides. And that comes down. And like I said, some parts of the river, yes, they're, they were nipple deep today. It gets higher for me, um, you know. So probably like five, four and a half feet, five feet deep or some of the parts. There's probably parts that are six feet, but most of it is a foot deep. And it can carve through stone with persistence. So that's all I kept thinking today. There's two main things. So that's the first thing that I want to talk about is... I don't want to turn this into like a, a self-help channel or like an inspirational channel or like these corny little quotes. But when you're in nature and you have time to reflect, I was thinking this is like a Garden of Eden. They have these animals here that are living with humans that are they're stewarding them. So there's no hunting or whatever in there. Um, it's very well preserved. People go to the areas that, they, that they're that they designated to go to and you're not allowed to get off that path with the exception of a few areas near the beach where the water's constantly changing things. That stuff you can get off. And I, I have a video of me going down there solo near a horse path. Um, but just thinking about the persistence over uh, millions of years that it can carve that out and then lineage and then how i can if i think about it now if i i've made a video i try to make a video every day when i get back i'll make a video yesterday i was so exhausted so tired it was out in the sun all day i and i just couldn't really think about something to do but i knew in my head i was like just start doing it learning to talk to people then when i get the comments i'll see what direction and what questions people have and then it'll be kind of decentralized talk back and forth between me and you, the audience, because I'll slowly start to run out of ideas, but you'll have questions. And like anything, um, like pers you know, the persistence of the river, if I just keep persisting, I'll grow, grow this big channel, this big uh, you know, group of people that can share similar ideas and debate and talk and what have you, and it'll turn into this big, beautiful um, thing like Zion National Park. The, the back and forth is really important to me. And I was sitting there today trying to just listen to nature and see what it had to tell me, and that river story just come, kept coming back into my head. The other thing that it was doing, it was, it was just having me think about beauty in the world first of all but my legacy and the first night there it was like sunset i didn't know if i wanted to share this or not if i'm going to keep this between me and some personal friends that i that i talked about it but i was just watching the sunset come down over the mountains and i don't know how long i'll live uh my grandparents lived to after they did the uh, they fled Nazi Germany uh, from Greece when the 
the Germans were attacking. They lost their hair because of malnourishment and stuff. They were sickly and everything. They came here. They were poverty struck. And, and they still lived to be in their late 90s, almost 100 years old. So the Greek DNA is pretty good. My father didn't take very good care of himself, so it's hard to tell. He is already passed in his 70s, early 70s. So I'm 48. So I'm hoping that I'm not going to die in my 70s. I'm going to make it uh, closer to 100. I'm in good health. I was literally telling my friend, I'm like, you're in good shape. I'm good shape. He's like, dude, you're in great shape. I'm like, ah, I'm, I got 30 pounds. I want to lose this, that, and the other thing. Yesterday I did like four hours of hiking in the sun. And then I took my shoes off, hiked back barefoot, went through the river, got on a bus, took it back down and said, you know what? I want to check out the river. Started going up the path. There was nobody around. So then I was like, you know what? I haven't trail ran in a while. So I, don't know. So I got a full pack on barefoot running through the, the soft sand. And about 40 minutes later I get to the destination so I slow down and I'm just thinking oh maybe I am in <laughs> better shape than than I think because I mean it, it I think I was feeling out of shape because the altitude is in you know I was staying at 8,000 feet 7,000 feet in the Grand Canyon it's pretty high here and it took my body a little while to adjust but now that I've been here a week or so I'm feeling a lot better when I go home and run, I'm probably going to feel like a superstar. Uh, once I'm back down at sea level running, it's going to be, it's going to, I don't know if you get extra red blood cells or whatever it is, but I finally feel uh, comfortable here. But as I was watching the sunset, I was like, I have a lot of knowledge and wisdom that I want to share with people and try to get back. Um, I know there's a lot of young kids the Gen X kind of just gets forget about forgot about because I don't know I, I like Elon and, and them these big tech guys are all Gen X and people kind of don't put it on them but the millennials and Gen Z and Gen Alpha don't sen seem to like boomers or they fight with the millennials but they kind of leave Gen X alone and one thing I want to say to you if you don't like the boomers and you think they're tough and they screwed everything up. Imagine being raised and beaten by them. So Gen Xers, whatever you think the boomers did bad, they were fit, they were physically and emotionally doing it directly to us and not secondary lineage, like the effects of it, the ripple effects. So give us a break. It took me a little while to get to where I am mentally and feel healthy. And so now that I have feel a self-love the first step and I'm good now I can give some wisdom in back to, to the youth here hopefully and then and, and anybody my age or older or whatever it's not for anybody but I want to kind of give this back to the youth because I don't I'm not married I don't have any children um if you know if anybody wants to get <laughs> tests or whatever we can see if i if paternity tests we can see if i have any children but i don't have any children and i was at zion park and it was just so beautiful and i was thinking they used to come back here you know in the 1930s 1940s native americans used to walk through here pioneers used to walk through here how different it be and i was like i want to bring this friend this friend here and show it. i'm like oh if i had kids this is where i bring bring them and i saw couples with their children and i was like i need to redirect my life in some sort of path to find a wife but the problem is i feel like i missed the boat because modern day women I'm not attracted to, or I'm attracted to the idea of a woman, and the idea of a woman has changed. So I, I honestly, like I'm just at the park, and when I see a woman that's covered in tattoos, or then there wasn't that many, they didn't have the dye hair and they weren't overweight, these are hikers and stuff, but when I see a woman just kept covered in tattoos, I just think, that's a man like it just it when I look at him I'm not saying no, there's no tragedy it just crosses my mind as if oh that's a masculine 
person. So maybe gender is a spectrum because um, I don't find it. Now, it's not that there can't be masculine women without tattoos, but something in my brain just turns off uh, attraction. When I see a woman with, even even when I see a beautiful woman, when I see one tattoo on her ankle or one tattoo on her hair or her shoulder, like a tiny tattoo, it just clicks on my head. And I was like, why would you do that? Like, you're at Zion National Park, right? So imagine somebody took um, spray paint and just put one piece of graffiti on the wall or whatever, or just like took a chisel and put their initials into this million year old rock. It's like, it's so beautiful. Why would you want to destroy it with that? Now, I guess there's an argument for the fact that there is artwork around the park and there's a lodge there and they put a road there and they put chain there. So I guess they could say, well, that's all man-made stuff that's been added to the park. So maybe some people see it like that. I do not see it like that. Um, so I'm hoping that putting these videos out, I'll start building a community and best case scenario, I find somebody through the community that gets to know me like this and has similar stuff. Worst case scenario, um, I can be an example of what not to do in your life. Like that poster, you know, the purpose of your life meet might strictly be to show others what not to do. Oh, it's getting super windy and rainy outside. Maybe there's a storm of brewing. Uh, so I'm going to be going hiking in the canyon tomorrow. One thing out east in New Hampshire, as I know, is it's a lot harder to get into. I, I have conversations with my community, but mostly the businesses I deal with. And some of the people, it's much harder to get into a conversation with people when you're out, though. They're very standoffish. Um, part of this is people are on vacation, so I think they're open and they're friendly and they're out in the sun. But even the people in the stores and stuff, even the locals. Oh, sorry, I shouldn't shoot the camera. I'm more open, more comfortable, more talkative, friendly. Um, I think it's cultural, but it's also so much um, safer here. So you don't have to have your guard up. Um, the, the area that I was staying in was gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. Just go out of my hotel, look out my balcony of my hotel, just big red rock here. We had pools and hot tubs, fire pitch. You walk down the street, there's zero litter. They have these big red sidewalks. Um, they had free shuttles in and out of the park. Everybody's friendly and they're talking to one another and they're giving. Or maybe that's just my experience. Maybe people had bad experiences. But people t tend to be open and talkative with me. I mean, I met so many people along the river that just every time they saw me again, we would just stop and talk for like five minutes to the point where I was like, I was starting to get New england -y. Like, all right. I'm trying to hike here. I'm trying, and I didn't do that. I stayed in the moment and I enjoyed it. Um, but so a couple of things, I guess we got to talk some philosophy, right? So lineage, good, bad, or ugly. Most of the world right now, or a lot of the world right now, if you're living in America, the UK, and stuff like that, and it. I mean, it could be getting worse. So I saw a little video the other day of Louis C.K. on Joe Rogan. It, it just seemed insane where he's saying, well, we have it too good. We should let in people that make it shitty so everybody lives shitty. And it's like the lack of lineage. I wonder if Louis C.K. would say that about Israel, his homeland, or if, if he's just saying that about um the United States because it's like when you build a lineage and you want to protect it I can't imagine what it would be like if Zion Park was like um, invaded destroyed ripped down the lodges broken the statues are broken there was litter everywhere there was great graffiti the security was it's like set on fire it's like 
there should be nice places and we should cultivate it. And it starts with yourself. You start, you know, you create a good body for yourself. And it's kind of like Jordan Peterson says, clean your room. But I think if you take it a step back, like you want to try to clean yourself. And in order to do that, yes, cleaning your room helps. And then clean your yourself up and you're fixing yourself in your close surroundings. And then maybe you branch out to the whole apartment, to your whole house, to your yard. And then once you can handle those things, you know what I mean? You're working on a business, so you're cleaning up and adding value outside your community. And then if you build a family, you have you teach them to do the same thing. So then their family leaves and they clean and help save society. When people are destroying stuff and breaking down the lineage, the it's just sadness because I I know there's so many people that have low expectations and bigotry. It, and I do see it from both sides. So if somebody is out destroying their community, it's the exact opposite of cleaning your room. I know that if somebody is destroying their community, if you go into your their house, the house is destroyed. And if you go into their room, their room is destroyed. In if you look and talk to them, their insides are destroyed and they're probably not physically healthy. They're probably not emotionally healthy. You don't go out and destroy when you, when you know how hard it is to build. So with philosophy, my rule number one is know thyself. And so if you have an issue like anger or depression or anxiety, um, what I don't like about today and how I want to be careful with my words here. I don't particularly believe wholeheartedly in uh, mental illness to the extent where I almost don't even believe schizophrenia is real. Um, I'm not sure we can reverse that stuff. So if you want to call that mental illness, then yes. But I just think that it's a trauma that can sort of be fixed if it's not genetic. And stuff like schizophrenia, I wouldn't call mental illness because you can scan the brain of somebody that's got schizophrenia and you'll see different firings. But prior to anxiety, or like when they when they claim that somebody's got ADHD or whatever, unless it's a physical ADHD where it's ticks and tripping and stuff, there's no scan different. They can give you a drug and then the brain will look different after the drug, but they can't prove what's right and wrong. So if it was an actual ish physical issue that could be cured through just chemical reactions then it would be cured and you could scan and you could show objectively before and after what it looks like. It wouldn't be this engineering of a personality that you want. Um, having said that, that's what this new generation is. So it's like your mental framework, your, nor your neuro, I do kind of believe in neurodiversity because we're all different. So I had neural pathways that were built in me. I had neural pathways that were built into me due to trauma and I had to learn and know thyself to figure out those chemical reactions, learn them and how to react and see which ones I wanted to change and then work on changing them. And if you have a trauma for 10 years, it might take you at least five to fix it because you've been doing that habit for 10 years. So you shouldn't expect to fix it through three months. It's going to be a lot of work. But as soon as you enter in a chemical, now you're becoming addicted to that chemical and the reactions of that chemical. So now you have a whole different set of things that have changed. And then you don't know where your, where your baseline is. So the idea that everybody's supposed to be calm and collected all the time without these emotional highs and lows, um, I think is social engineering, individual engineering. And you can do that. So somebody might choose and say, look, 
this is the natural way that I am. This is how my chemicals are in my body. They go up and down. Instead of learning them, we have drugs. So if you prefer not to be in alignment with the natural order of your body, and you want to take these um, these drugs, you know, and some people do it with alcohol, some people do it with weed, some people do it with mushrooms. They're doing it with pharmaceutical um, chemicals in a lot of ways. And what it does is you can stimulate your brain in a particular way to create a particular response. And so the people that are in control of those drugs are playing God in a sort of way to control the chemicals within you. And then you're working with them to say, this is how I feel, this is how I feel based on the drugs. So if you're the type of individual that, and I would say that is atheistic and I, I say it's anti-science because it's engineering. So science is what is. So you could see, there's my body, just like physics is you look what happens and then you figure out the mathematical equations to coincide with what is. Like if you're gonna go um, look at yourself and the chemicals get released, you can learn coping mechanisms. You can learn those chemical releases. You can um, be, forgive yourself and become at peace with them. Or you can say, look, I don't have to do that. That's the nat natural order. That's how God made me. That's how I ended up in, in this way. Um, I want to take these particular drugs because if you, you have free will, if you want to choose to be in control, um, be controlled by the drugs that are given to you by somebody else. That's fine. To me, I see it as a form of enslavement um, because those pharmaceutical companies are making those drugs. And when they first got released, they were just said, "Okay, you're this. They're they're um, a stepping stone. You're depressed. We'll give you these drugs. When you get out of your depression, you get weaned off of it." But most people now, and it's understood that people get on these for life and they balance them. And they're like these lifelong drugs. So now, whoever you are is not who you are anymore. So it's fine. Like I said, you can engineer your thing. There's people that, that like for me, I want to try and wean myself a little bit off of caffeine. But I take caffeine every day and it adjusts my personality and it sets me up. In a particular manner where my brain's firing how I like it to have, I'm thinking and I'm go, I'm go, I'm go, I'm go here. Whereas if I don't do that, it's, I'm very slow to get started during the day. And then another hour of like slow mental thinking, then my brain finally picks up. And then in the afternoon, it gets slow again. And I don't like how I mentally can't accomplish as much as I can. So I do take, um, Caffeine, so I guess that that's a way to engineer my body compared to what it naturally is as well. So I'm not saying that I'm not guilty of it. I'm just saying understand that it's not the natural order of things. And where where do you want to be on the spectrum? So one of the things like the Mormons do, just happen to be in Utah, is they don't do any of those chemicals or any of those stimulants because they say, you know, God gave you this particular type of balance. Stay healthy. Stay mental. Um, stay clear, which same thing, kind of like Scientology, you stay in that mindset and get close to your natural elements and learn who you are and then see where you fall in the spectrum of, um, of like anger, for example. And if you're super, if you get a lot of chemicals that make you angry all the time, it normally means that you're experiencing a chemical reaction that you don't know. So you get frustrated and you don't know an answer to it. So you default to anger. When I was younger, I would default to anger. So once you start learning the different chemicals in you, and they can, it can take time, you can get back on track without, my fridge is going off, without these issues. So I'm rambling a little, a little bit. So let me, let me pull all this back together because um, I'm about 30 minutes in now.
it things take time like that river that's flowing through Zion National Park the river itself is water flowing so if you don't believe in a designer or a god and I'm not saying that I do then it didn't technically have a purpose um, but it's falling it's being filtered and clean through the porousness of the rocks it's being shot out laterally once it hits a solid rock it's just dripping down and it's carving and it has a purpose and it just every little day you can't even see it it chips away if you can be like that river if you can wake up tomorrow and say okay I'm getting too angry or I'm getting too sad or I'm getting too anxious or I haven't started the project that I want. Instead of trying to finish that whole project and just get everything done and planning everything, similar to me just finally making these videos once and for all. And taking accountability for, you are, but for who you are, but also forgiving yourself for who you are. Forgiveness is a big part of it. So when you get angry about something, you're going to react in a particular way. And then if you react in that way that's bad, you'll, you can compound your anger on top of anger on anger. But if you feel that angerness and you're like, oh, and you do something, then say, okay, I'm working on this. I forgive myself right here for the situation. And trace it back. What happened? What did I feel? Why did I get like that? And how can I make the adjustments? So for me, one trigger that I used to have was I would get anxious about punctuality. Um, if I was late, and I still kind of have this. It it just stems from uh, childhood abuse, where like. I was trying to figure out what was going on, but it had nothing to do with me. It had to do with my parents not understanding their emotions and then projecting. Like, I was, everything I did was wrong just when it was, and I was like, how would I fix this? But it was them. So being late was a big one. But if you're trying to fix your punctuality because you get anxious when you're late, then, you know, a simple fix is to get up earlier or to go to bed earlier. You know what I mean? So you're like, oh, I can't get up early because I'm tired. We'll go to bed early. Or I can't go to bed early because I stay up all night. So then the, your, you know, a goal for you could be fix your sleeping habits and could have good sleep hygiene and make that a standard in your life. That you take particular supplements, brush your teeth, get ready, do everything you need to do at this time and learn to say no to anything that takes you out of that and work on that sleep hygiene. I do it. I go to bed almost at the same time every night. I take the same supplements for bedtime every night. And I have a, you know, I wear a blackout mask. I wear a nose spread or I darken the room or whatever. I put it to the right temperature and my sleep quality is perfect. And for over two decades now, I get up between 4 a.m. and 5 a.m. late clockwork with no alarm. And if you're up at four or five and your appointment's not until nine or 10, then you have four hour window to get ready and plan properly. If you are still procrastinating and not getting there, then there's another anxiety thing that would be you and you have to fix that and so on and so forth. Um, I don't know. This video is 34 minutes long. I feel like it's all over the place. It's random, but maybe that's what I needed to get out today. I told myself I was going to make a video every day and then I'll get more precise with my videos once I release stuff like this and it, and it sparks something in your brain as the viewer and then you put a comment down or you email me a question and then I can... I can either use your name or just do it generically and answer you back in a video. And then I'll do that. And at some point, I'll have so many questions, I, I won't have the time to answer them all. And I'll have to pick the best of the best of the ones that I think I haven't, re, haven't done already. 
and go through and it'll just be a cycle and then it'll be decentralized and the community and me will be working together to create videos so this mark this crazy random thing that started with my zion journey talked about mental health drugs how you can repair yourself gen z all this craziness as something that might spark something in your brain to to like subscribe email me and ask a question write a question below and then i can make a video and we can build together on top of this you and me can both be a droplet of water in that river that carves out this beautiful community uh in the canyon of <laughs> the future of this philosophy show all right so i made my one video a day it was nice talking to you and it was nice getting a lot of that stuff off my chest i had a lot of fun if you have the chance if you're blessed enough if you have the opportunity to get out to zion national park it's probably my favorite place that i've experienced so far um over my two cross-country trips, 30-day cross-country trips, one last year, and I'm 21, 20 days in to this year. And I mean, I've gone to the Badlands, Wyoming. Um, I haven't done Yellowstone, but I've done Blue Ridge Parkway, so many national parks, and Zion is just... So, all right, enough's enough.